Okay, so on to photosynthesis. Uh, although a lot of things can do photosynthesis, we'll primarily uh, talk about plants uh, as being the major producers of this set of reactions called photosynthesis. And this is, uh, one of my colleagues has pointed out, this is uh, often thought of by many people, including my colleague, um, one of the most important, probably the most important chemical reaction that goes on in the planet, uh, at least for us humans, as well as most of living things in the world, uh, because what this reaction does essentially is it produces glucose. So glucose then is a chemical source of energy for practically everything on the planet, including the plants. But plants and a few bacteria and a few other things uh, are able to do this. Uh, most things cannot. Uh, so we'll talk about plants primarily. And the first thing I'll mention here, uh, if we look at a plant, plants can be divided up into two sort of systems on a plant. One's called the root system. This is primarily to hold the plant in the ground, depending on what kind of plant it is and if it's in the ground even, uh, but to absorb water. And then the shoot system is everything thought of as being above the ground, once again, if it's even in the ground. And the shoot system includes the leaves, uh, as well as flowers and things like that, which are used for reproduction. Um, the flowers for reproduction and the leaves primarily used for photosynthesis. Okay, so we're going to talk about that as we go through. Uh, inside a plant, if you were to look at the tissues of plants, plants have a variety of tissues just like animals do. Two important tissues that I want you to know that we're going to talk about in here is xylem and phloem two important tissues found in a plant. Xylem is used to transport water, and in this particular case, you can see this is the xylem inside here, forms an X on this particular type of plant, and so that transports water. And then the phloem is primarily used to transport food. So sugars, amino acids, things like that are transported by that tissue. There's a variety of different kinds of plants. Some of these you're probably familiar with. Uh, evolutionarily, you can see plants have been around for a long time, 400 million years or more. Um, and uh, we have different groups of plants that I want to point out. Angiosperms, which are flowering plants. This is uh, roses and probably pretty much most of the plants you're used to seeing it includes not only flowers, but often many trees as well. Uh, then we have the gymnosperms, and those are things like pine trees. Uh, then we have what we call the seedless vascular plants, uh, ferns, for example, or seedless vascular plants. And then we have the seedless non-vascular plants. Those are called the bryophytes. And an example of that that you're probably familiar with are things like mosses that live in really uh, wet aquatic, uh, not necessarily aquatic, but very uh, wet environments uh, around, you know, maybe shaded areas in your garden and things like that. Okay. Um, when we talk about photosynthesis, uh, one of the most important parts is to talk about this organelle right here, which is called the chloroplast. So the chloroplast, kind of like the mitochondria, is an organelle found in plants uh, and other uh, species that are sort of related to them that essentially is able to do photosynthesis. And also like the plants, um, the uh, chloroplast has two sort of membrane layers to it. It has an outer membrane, an inner membrane, and then it has these little um, stacks these little stacks that we call, uh, each one of these is, is called a thylakoid. So a thylakoid is one of these, I always think they look like little junior mints. And if you stacked up a bunch of junior mints, each one would be a thylakoid. And together, uh, those things are called the stroma. You see another word here, stomata, that's also important. If you look on the underside of a leaf, and we'll actually do this in lab, um, if you look on the underside of the leaf, you see these little lip looking structures uh, kind of look like this. Okay, so there's the lip structures. The lip structures are called guard cells, and those are able to change shape. And the hole is the stomata. So the hole where gas exchange can occur is called the stomata, surrounded by guard cells. And that allows you to get CO2 and oxygen in and out of the plant cell. So we'll talk about that as well. 
Uh, just like we did with cellular respiration, uh, we're going to break down photosynthesis, and I'm going to walk you through and show you sort of all the steps, but once again, uh, at the end of it, uh, for our non-majors bio class, what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to break this down and kind of keep track of, well, what goes in and what comes out and what was the main goal of that? What did we accomplish? So we'll talk about the light reactions, also called the light dependent reactions, and we'll talk about what goes in, what comes out, and what our main goal is. We'll do that. You notice here NADPH. That should look sort of familiar, but it's actually slightly different than the NADH that we made in cellular respiration. Uh, and then we have the dark reactions, which can also be called the light independent reactions or the Calvin cycle. And you should be familiar with all three of those terms as well as these two. And, and so, because when you're reading it, you want to make sure you understand those are talking about the same thing. And here we're going to take CO2 and we're going to take this enzyme called Rubisco. This is a little tricky because usually when you see an enzyme, you're used to seeing it end in the word ACE. And this is true also. Rubisco is short for ribulose 1,5 biphosphate carboxylase oxygenase. So, oxygenase. So, it, uh, it is an enzyme, as you see there, but that's such a long term that we just sort of shorten it and call it Rubisco. But do keep in mind that that's just short for a word that actually ends in ACE, and so it is an enzyme. And we're going to get out of that a molecule called G3P. Um, G3P is essentially glucose. So if you can make G3P, you can make glucose. This is one of the steps that you, if you look back in cellular respiration, you'll see this one pop up. So we'll just for our purposes say that that's glucose to make it easy. All right. Um, first thing we got to do when we talk about uh, the light reactions, at least, is we have to talk a little bit about light. So light is a type of energy, okay? And there are different uh, forms uh, of energy. And so you notice different wavelengths of energy up here, gamma rays, x-rays, and then ultraviolet. And then right in here, based on the size and the wavelength at which the light travels, this is what we call the visible spectrum. And you can take the visible spectrum and break that down into a variety of colors. And this is what you see when you see a rainbow. So a rainbow is essentially the sunlight, uh, as it passes through water, it breaks it up into its different colors. We'll actually do this in lab as well. Um, and, and you see on, on the lower end here, here are the 380 nanometers versus 750 nanometers. So a short wavelength um, over here and a long wavelength over here. You notice those are associated with different colors. So purple, blues, greens, yellows, oranges, and reds. And what happens is uh, plants are green and anything really is the color that it appears because we perceive it that way because the light that bounces onto the leaf in the case of something that's green, the green is not absorbed and, and so instead that bounces back. And so we see green because the light from the sun, for example, hits that and the green light that's in the what we call the white light will bounce off and you'll see green. Okay, so plants generally are absorbing blue light and red light and they are reflecting green light and that's what we see okay uh, so once again here's another picture showing you the chloroplast uh, here and um, these thylakoids right there and what happens with the uh, thylakoids um, is the um, light travels in and as it hits this it bounces off and you see green uh, I'd like to correct uh, something I said earlier about the strom, and the strom is this area, and here the granulum is that stack of thylakoids. And that's okay. The only thing I want you to really know is this term here, the thylakoid. And actually, the strom is on the inside of that. And we're going to use that later on when we talk about um, the Calvin cycle. So these individual structures here, the thylakoids, is, is each um, individual, one of those junior mints I called before. Now, um, when we talk about the actual reaction, there's a very important molecule here called chlorophyll. You've probably heard of it before. Chlorophyll is a light sensitive molecule. And what happens is when light hits chlorophyll, the energy is passed through the molecule 
in chlorophyll. And you notice we have chlorophyll A here and chlorophyll B, slightly different in structure. But what ends up happening is the light passes through that. It transfers the energy in chlorophyll uh, to this center, uh, which has a magnesium center in this case. So what we're going to do then is we're going to use this thing uh, that we call um, a... Um, a primary electron acceptor. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the light energy um, and we're going to pass the light energy as it hits the chlorophyll. It's going to pass to the center and we're going to use that high energy electron and we're going to capture the energy from that. We're going to take that electron away and so what they're, what they're trying to show you here is it's sort of jumping up to a high energy state, okay? So we usually associate like a graph of something going up in the air that takes energy because of the gravity. Uh, so in this case, it's not really gravity, it's the light energy that we're transferring to a high energy state for this electron. And once again, as, as, we, as we lose that, if that energy were to fall back, if you will, to a lower state, that would give off light and perhaps heat, and we're going to capture that energy to run our next set of reactions. So what happens is that, that essentially, this is the same drawing, but this is drawn showing you this thylakoid membrane. So once again, just like a cell membrane, but this is found inside the chloroplast, um, and so this is actually inside, this is the thylakoid membrane, the little junior mint thing I mentioned before. And this is a protein in here, and this is where the chlorophyll is at. So here's the light hitting it. A, a photon is an is a energy unit of light transferring the energy to the special chlorophyll molecules. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take a hold of that energy. I'm going to grab it using this other protein here called a primary electron acceptor. So the energy that travels in the light is going to go from light to chlorophyll and it's going to, in that photosystem, this whole unit here is called a photosystem, we're going to transfer the energy through that to the chlorophyll and then the chlorophyll is going to transfer that energy to this primary electron acceptor. Okay, so uh, in this particular case in photosynthesis we have two of them. One's called photosystem one, one's called photosystem two. And when we explain these, you'll notice I'll start over here because the flow of this makes sense this way. Uh, so it looks like they're named backwards almost. And that's because this is the order in which they were discovered. So this photosystem was discovered first and later on this one was discovered. So what happens here is the light energy transfers through the molecule to your special chlorophyll molecules and then what happens is that energy transfers to your primary electron or your primary uh, electron acceptor, correct? And then we're going to transfer that energy from protein to protein to protein and as we do that we're going to give off a little bit of ATP. The final electron acceptor in that chain, so you notice this is also an electron transport chain, the final electron acceptor here will be this photosystem one. So we're going to transfer the energy of that to photosystem one. Photosystem one's losing its electrons by doing a similar reaction as light hits it. It's transferring the energy. And this electron is going to be used to power another set of reactions we'll get to here in a second. Now, once photosystem two does its reactions and the electron's gone, you need to replace it because you don't have that high energy electron anymore. So how are you going to get that replaced so you can do the reaction again? Well, we have a special reaction here that you notice here. It's called water splitting. It happens in photosystem two. So water splitting. And what happens with water splitting is as we use a special enzyme to split the water, we're going to take the electrons of that and we're going to put that in photosystem two. That gives me out of that oxygen. And once again, don't worry about the half O2. They do that so the equation will balance. What you should understand is what comes out of that reaction is O2, which is oxygen. So in plants, uh, plants use up water, as you probably know. And the reason plants need water is plants need water, in part at least, to drive this photosynthesis during the light reactions. One of the things plants give off in 
photosynthesis during the light reactions is they give off oxygen. Okay, so here's a picture once again showing you the same thing, has a little bit more detail uh, on this end of it, but here's my uh, photosystem two. All right, that's photosystem two. This is photosystem one, also called the NAD pH producing photosystem here, and the water splitting photosystem, photosystem two, photosystem one. So light hits this primary electron acceptor. We're going to transfer the electron energy. Uh, and as we do that, we're going to make a little bit of ATP, which is not my main goal. As you'll see, we use that later on. And as that electron transfers to uh, photosystem one, that energy in that primary electron acceptor is going to be used to take this molecule here, NADP plus, and make NADPH. And once again, so you notice there's a little difference here. There's that phosphate. So this is similar to NAD, and this is similar to NADPH. They are structurally just a little bit different, but it's the same concept as before. This is a high energy state molecule. This is holding on to a high energy electron molecule that we're going to use later on in the next step. Uh, and this is why I said it's very important. Um, this part of the course, it gets a little tricky uh, because uh, cellular respiration, for example, and photosynthesis, uh, they look very similar. There's slight differences in them, uh, but one's almost the opposite of another. And so you really need to spend some time making sure you understand the details a little bit. Otherwise, these are going to sort of mesh together and look exactly the same. Uh, this is another picture just showing you it sort of in a different way. Uh, these little, these little um, uh, pictorials that try to show you the idea of energy. So here we have a person like hitting uh, this photon hammer, if you will, and that shoots this electron to a high energy state. And then we can use some of that energy now that it's up here. And in this case, once again, uh, gravity is just uh, a way that people understand things better uh, often than the idea of electricity, for example. So in this case, we're using the energy due to the gravity of this to spin this wheel, and therefore we can make ATP. And then over here, we, we use up some energy again Okay, so the energy falls down like this, and we use the energy, the light energy once again, to drive this up, and that gives us another high energy state in which we can produce NADPH. Okay, this is a view, believe it or not, this is the same thing. This shows you what it looks like chemically. Uh, so once again, this should look like, it should look similar to you, to the electron transport chain of cell respiration, okay? Looks the same, or similar, I should say, but it's not exactly the same, all right? So here, because there's no light involved in cellular respiration here. So you notice, here's my light coming in, and that is being used, the, the light is channeled with these antenna molecules to the um, chlorophyll. My primary electron acceptor in my photosystem two is going to take that high energy electron, pass it from protein to protein to protein. I'm going to use that to drive uh, this reaction. You notice down here, um, I'm using the hydrogen ions here. I'm producing a little bit of ATP. So that should look kind of like what we did. Uh, here's my ATP synthase okay, uh, that we did in cellular respiration. And then once again, over here, the final electron acceptor in cell respiration was oxygen. But in this case, it's going to be photosystem one. That energy uh, in photosystem one is being used once again through another electron transport chain to produce NADPH, okay? Uh, just another view showing you sort of the same thing Okay, so once again, here's photosystem two, here's photosystem one, here's my electron transport chain, right? That's where my final electron acceptor is gonna be, which is photosystem one in this case. There's my water splitting reaction where I get O2 out of photosystem two, and there's my NADPH, all right? So those reactions are important because then I'm going to take what I made there and I'm going to use that to drive 
the next step, which is called the Calvin cycle or the light independent reaction or the dark reactions because it doesn't necessarily, this doesn't use any light. You don't need any light uh, to do this. So what happens is um, we're going to, the plant's going to take in CO2. And CO2 is just found in the atmosphere. So once again, this is a waste product of what came out of cellular respiration. This is going to go into um, the Calvin cycle. And here's my enzyme I mentioned before, Rubisco. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take um, my CO2 in this enzyme Rubisco, and I'm going to build uh, this using this larger molecule. I'm going to attach my CO2 to that bigger molecule here. And what's going to happen is I'm going to use up my ATP, as you notice there, okay, that I produce. So I'm going to use some ATP up, um, and I'm going to use up my NADPH. Remember, my NADPH is holding, if you will, my high energy electrons. Okay, it's holding my high energy electrons. So I'm going to transfer the energy from my NADPH to make this molecule here, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate or G3P. And once again, G3P, if you can make G3P, you can essentially make glucose. So we'll just say that G3P, for our purposes, is the same as glucose. It's not exactly the same, but it's very close. And it just makes things easier if you have, you know, if you can just think of it that way. Uh, this is a, an intermediate in the, the step, but if you can think of it this way, it works uh, easier for you, okay? So uh, once again, here's a, a summary sort of showing you the light reactions and the dark reactions together. So here's my light reactions, and what comes out of my light reactions is O2, and I get water out of that. I'm taking in light. I'm making some ATP and NADPH. Those are used to drive the Calvin cycle, and I need CO2 to do that along with Rubisco, and what I get out of that is I get sugar. And then the sugar can be used in cellular respiration, for example. So plants have, they have chloroplasts to do this. But plants, once they make the glucose, they still need ATP. So plants also have mitochondria. So plants also have mitochondria. So keep that in mind. They have both. Okay, both. Very important. Uh, people think, well, plants have um, just the chloroplasts and they don't have mitochondria. Uh, what happens is the glucose there, you make the glucose, but to break the glucose down, you still need to do cellular respiration. Okay, so plants also do cellular respiration in order to make ATP from that. Uh, once again, here's my summary of the two different stages, light reactions, dark reactions, and what goes in is light, water, uh, ADP, and NADP+, plus, and what comes out of that is ATP. Notice there's my oxygen in the uh, first stage, in photo, or, sorry, photosystem 2, which I explained first just because the flow of it is better, uh, and my NADPH, that comes out in photosystem one, okay? And what ends up happening is, what's important about that is we make NADPH. We also make ATP and that's important as well. So I should add that there. And the dark reaction, what happens is we're gonna take uh, the CO2 from the atmosphere. We're gonna take this enzyme called Rubisco and we're gonna also take input from that. We're gonna take my NADH so I'm also going to take NADH here. I'm sorry, NADPH. Uh, I'm going to take NADPH. I'm going to take ATP. And I'm going to use that to produce G3P or glucose. And that is the main goal. So in cellular respiration, okay, the main goal was to produce ATP. Okay, in photosynthesis, just do that. There's my photosynthesis. My main goal in photosynthesis here is to produce glucose. And once again, plants 
do both cellular, respira cellular respiration and photosynthesis.